So, Lone Rider here, and I um, I wanted to talk about tires and road bikes. Uh, traditionally, road bikes came, at least when I was growing up, so back in the 90s, uh, road bikes came with 23-millimeter uh, tires, so you'd have a 700 by 23 tire on your rims. Uh, nowadays, there is a trend for a lot of bikes to come stock with slightly larger tires, uh, 25s, for example. But um, whenever possible, I've been mounting on my road bikes uh, 28. And this may sound like sacrilege to a lot of people, but excuse me. But what I've come to the awareness of is that larger tires just have a benefit to them. Um, it's not just a comfort benefit. Uh, there's a durability benefit as well. Uh, but there's just a certain, especially on the roads you have here in New Jersey, there's a certain confidence, I guess, that comes from, from knowing that your tires aren't the smallest, skinniest thing that, that's out there, um, you know, aside from maybe an ice skate blade. Uh, I mean, the, you know, knowing that your tire is probably not going to get caught in a storm drain, is probably not going to get punctured by any piece of gravel that you run over, etc., uh, that you have a little more, um, you, you know, the pressure might not be as high, but that you have a little more air volume in there so that you don't get a pinch flat, that you, um, uh, you know, you're less likely to skid out because the contact area is as small as it can be. Um, are they going to be as fast? You know, I don't know. There's a whole theory of study on that, you know, as far as uh, tire size and speed. Conventional wisdom for many years has been the skinnier, the better. Um, just because, you know, your contact area and friction with the ground is reduced. But everybody's got an opinion on that, and some people even have done the math. I, I haven't. I'm just talking about anecdotal experience from riding the bike. And, um, you know, not all of my bikes have just 28s. Uh, the custom frame that I built has got 32s, which is closer to what you'd see on a hybrid or a, a heavily laden touring bike. And... You know what? It works fine on the road. Uh, first time I rode it, after I got it put together, I uh, I was riding through the Great Swamp and I ran into a couple guys. Uh, one of them was on a titanium something or other. I think it was like a Sirota. I don't remember what the other guy was on, but it was made out of carbon fiber. And they were going along at a fairly brisk pace. And I was riding with them for a while and I didn't feel winded or anything, you know, from the, from the, the pace at which we were going. So, um... You know, now th these were two very fit looking younger dudes. It looked like if they had wanted to drop the hammer, I would have been left in the dust. But that has very little to do with the tire size and more to do with the the, the, the fitness and slimness of the other riders. Um, you know, the, as far as uh, ease of, you know, rolling and rolling resistance, uh, I didn't notice any, any impairment. Um, now, if they'd been heavily treaded tires, knobbies or something like that, maybe. But I wasn't talking about cyclocross tires. I was just talking about larger tires. And um, this bike, as you can see, looks very much like a normal road bike, but this one has 28s on it. So a lot of times it is possible to fit larger tires on just about, well, just about any bike you can think of. Um, almost all of them will accommodate 25s. And a lot of the newer ones will actually fit 28s. In fact, I fit 28s on a, on a track bike. Um, the... The thing you're going to run into trouble with is higher end and vintage stuff uh, where the clearances are a lot tighter. Um, for example, I have an old school Cannondale. 25s are the biggest I could probably fit on there because it's got really, really fat tubes even on the chain stays. And so you're not going to have tire clearance down there or perhaps up here. But could I fit 25s on it? Yeah. So basically, I go as big as the bikes let me. And... You know, some, the most you can get is a 25, some you can get 28. And, um, you know, I just feel, especially with the roads around New Jersey, that there's a, you know, um, there's a benefit to being able to, to ride tires that are a little more durable, that are a little more uh, forgiving. Um, you know, uh, since I've started using these, I haven't gotten really any flats uh, to speak of. Um, can't think of any anyway. Um, of course, it's been snowing all winter, so I haven't been riding as much as normal either. But uh, 
you know, the there's a benefit to to more comfortable, more durable, and um, uh, you know, more versatile tires. Uh, this bike doesn't look like it's designed for off-roading in any way. It's got, you know, still fairly skinny road tires. But I've taken this on gravel roads, dirt roads, not a problem. Um, it's just, uh, it, it's one of the advantages of having having wider tires like that. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. You know, a lot of people talk about tire size when it comes to mountain bikes. And, you know, much better 26, 650B. 29er, yada yada, all down the line. Uh, wider is better, narrower is better, tubeless. But people forget that it's an issue with road bikes as well. And interestingly enough, there has been a trend. Like I said, I've seen a lot of newer road bikes being sold with 25s instead of 23s. Um, now that may be because they're at, they're entry level or mid range road bikes, and they're catering to um, newbie riders who they're maybe thinking the the newbie riders will look at those tires and figure, well, they're bigger tires and more comfortable. I honestly don't know. But, um, you know, for years I've been tinkering with everything from gearing to tire size. And one of the things that I found is that, um, you know, going to larger tires on your road bike, uh, it's a no brainer. You know, um, maybe if you're racing or there's some rule, you know, like a UCI rule or something, or just, you know, you're trying to compete with what everybody else has, may, that, that may be then it, then maybe stick with uh, 23s or 25s at the most. Uh, and it is worth noting that there's some tire availability issues with 28s. Um, I don't think you're going to see higher end tires like Vittoria's or Vredenstein's um, offered in 28s all that much. Some of them do 25s. You know, these are CST Calderas. They're like cheapo tires. Um, that's, you know... Now you can get decent, like like I have a pair of Continentals that are pretty decent tires. Those are, I think, uh, 28s and 32s. I, I have different pairs of those. But, uh, you know, generally speaking, um, most of the higher end road tires are only going to go up to 25. But okay, so you go up to 25. It's still a little bit bigger. You know, um, it's something to think about anyway. Um, don't be... Don't be looking at it and saying, well, okay, the racers use 23s, so I should use 23s. There's a lot of stuff that the racers do that really wouldn't suit the average person all that well. Um, you know, whether you're talking about riding to the store or long, you know, road rides for fun or fitness or whatever. Um, I mean, we can start with the fact that, you know, uh, they've got team support, right? They break down. There's a guy there to hand them, not just a, a, a spare wheel, but at the pro level, you get a whole new bike, right? I mean, we don't have that. So, you know, when you buy equipment, you should keep in mind that it's not just an issue of, you know, is it the latest and greatest or this or that. Think about durability. Think about ease of maintenance. Think about other things. You know, the the fastest bike isn't the bike that's the closest thing to what Jan Ulrich or, or Tyler Hamilton or somebody is riding. The fastest bike is the one that's not in the shop because you were riding real high-end racing components, but you were, unlike the racers, putting real-world miles on them in real-world conditions, in, in roads that aren't maintained for a one-time event, in roads that are potholes and cars and all sorts of stuff. And something broke. Right? The fastest bike is the one that's still on the road because it's more durable. And it doesn't mean you can't buy a, a racing bike or, or anything like that. It's just, you know, don't just have that tunnel vision and be like, well, what, what are the racers doing? Because your context isn't the same as the context of a racer. You know, um, I... I'm not going to need the same. Now, if you can afford it and you're just like, well, I want to have like a top end racing bike just for the hell of it. The way somebody might want to go out and buy like a Formula One car. That's fine. You know, but if you're going to be spending money on your own gear, keep in mind, these guys get new stuff every season. <laughs> right. You're gonna, If you're going to drop a lot of money on a bike, you're going to be keeping that bike for a long time. So 
you know, choose a bike that's good for you. And when it comes to tire size, you know, you might want to look at the bike and say, if you're in the bike shop, ask the dealer, hey, will this fit, will this fit wider tires? You know, and if they don't know, and you're really thinking about buying that bike, find out. Because if you decide, hey, you know what, I want to run 25s, I want to run 28s. You know, maybe, I mean, maybe that should be part of buying the bike as much as do I like the color and does it come with 11 speed? Right? Just thought. So uh, that's tire size, my my two cents. And, you know, I I started out just like everybody else. Oh, whatever the racers are doing, that should be the guideline. You know, when I started riding as a teenager, I had my stems way down here. I stayed in the big ring as long as I could. I, you know, all of that stuff. But you know what? I'm not 17 anymore. I know more now. So, you know, there's an advantage that I found over the years to, uh, you know, somewhat bigger tires. I'm not saying ride a fat bike in a pace line, but, you know, if you can get 25s or even 28s on your bike, you might want to give it a try. Lone Rider, out.